Hi, my name is Kylie and I am a business burnout coach and I'm excited to join you for another conversation with Pearl. Everybody, it's Pearl with Women's Successful Living, and I'm so excited. We are back again for another Conversations with Pearl. And oh my gosh, it has been a busy month, you guys. So if you've been following us, you know we just finished our Women's Successful Living Pajama Retreat, and it was such a blast. We were at the Gulf Shores of Alabama, and guess what? We're going back there again next year. And here's the thing. All 13 women are coming back, so that means we have grown the retreat so we have 10 more spots left so if you're interested make sure you listen to today's episode because at the end i'll tell you how to get a special discount on that but in the meantime i'm so excited to have our guest on today all the way from california which is as if you listen i'm one of my home states that i've been in my triangle around the u.s but today kylie oda is with us and she is an nlp certified business strategist who specializes in that burnout recovery for us high achieving female entrepreneurs and who doesn't understand burnout. Kylie is also a veteran of the Hawaii Army National Guard who spent 19 years in oil and gas managing multi-million dollar projects and developing up and coming leaders. That sounds so cool. So after leading and healing from medically diagnosed adrenal burnout, she decided to make a drastic change and leave her lucrative career to preserve the health she fought so hard to recover. I think that's so powerful. Kylie has adapted her work as a former Army behavioral science specialist and experienced in the fast-paced world of oil and gas and manufacturing to create her burnout recovery formula. And I can't wait for you guys to hear about this because who doesn't understand burnout? I mean, you know, over the past few months, if you've been following along, you know that I, I lost my son in July. And like life just like, whoo, just started going and going and going. And at one point I called my business coach and I was like, I need to get away. So I called Julie. I'm like, I need to get away. What do I do? And she's like, come up here, come visit me. So I went to Connecticut. So I'm so excited to have a conversation about this because whether you're an entrepreneur, whether you're just that CEO mom sitting home, listening to this right now, or you're that professional who's just like pulling your hair out because you've got that project to complete. I think you're going to get a lot of really good tips today. So Kylie, welcome to the show. Hi, thank Hi. you for having me. Yes. Oh, I'm so excited to have you. So wait, now I have to ask you, you're dressed in this sweater. Is it cold in California? It's cold for me. I'm originally from Honolulu, Hawaii, and it is like in the 50s today. So. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I remember- Those of you listening, you know, in- <laughs> I was on another podcast recently dressed like this and it was colder where the host was at. And she's like, well, I thought you're in Cal, same question. I thought you're in California. And I was like, yes, it's like in the 60s. She's like, oh, it's like 63 here. She was in a tank top. So, <laughs> well, listen, <laughs> I sympathize with you because even though I live in Florida and it's like 85 some days, I will be freezing cold. I'm like, where's my blanket? I always have a blanket on the couch, you know, and, and things like that. So I no no tease in here because I get a girlfriend. So, <laughs> so I'm excited. So tell us like, I always like to kind of start back. Tell us about, like, I love Hawaii. Like, tell us about growing up in Hawaii and um, a little bit about your childhood and what led you to joining the service. Yeah, so I grew up in Hawaii, born and raised. I'm Native Hawaiian. I'm also, if you're watching, you're like, what does a Native Hawaiian look like? So I'm part Native Hawaiian, but I'm also part Asian and part Caucasian. So I'm a total mix. Um, 
Uh, I went to a school for Native Hawaiians. So it was subsidized by money from the last monarchy, the princess, and she subsidized our education. So I went to that school. And when I went into college, I didn't have the funds to go into college. So that's how I ended up joining the army. Someone was like, hey, are you going to college? And I was like, no, I one of my friends. And just so happens her dad was the battalion commander of the Hawaii Army National Guard. And that's how I got introduced to that. I was like, what's the National Guard? Because he didn't say Army National Guard. He said National Guard. I'm like, oh, sounds cool. <laughs> so that's how I ended up in the military. Uh, right at 17, I'm a December baby. So I was 17, wasn't even 18. My parents had to sign me away in order for me to join the service. And that's how I ended up there. So, wow. So, okay. So here you are, National Guard, and then you go to the reality of going, oh my gosh, this is really something totally different than just a National Guard, right? So tell us that experience. Yeah. Like, you know, I, so I graduated high school in 1982. So I'm a little old, not really, I'm young at heart. But I remember they, that's when around the time they started coming to our schools and talking to women about joining the service. And I grew up a Marine Corps brat. Um, my dad did two and a half tours in Vietnam or three tours almost in Vietnam. I've got, you know, my grandfather was in the service at the time. I didn't have my, my younger brother wasn't old enough to be in the service yet, but I looked at them and I said, listen, nope, not for me. I grew up in that. I did not enjoy it. And, and, you know, I love, I've, we've gone on, I've got three generations. I've got nephews now, my brother have all gone in to the Marines and they're out now, but I, it just wasn't for me. And I, so I just can't imagine like, tell us what it was from a woman's perspective going into this like adventure you did. Yeah. So I joined in 1996. So I'm, I'm a little younger than you are, but not by a whole, a whole lot. Um, uh, that was when they first had the combined women and men um, boot camp, female male boot camp, and it it was they they were still trying to figure it out. We were still trying to like, figure it out, and so the drill sergeants it it was a it was a kind of a different world. Because the drill sergeants were used to having male and female soldiers all in, you know in the same companies and same platoons and working together, so you could feel. The drill sergeants were trying to navigate those waters as well. And I'll just say, um, yeah, I had I, I had a Me Too incident when I joined the Army. And it, it was a little uncomfortable. And, like, to just go through that process, especially with the um, non-secular, right, going in the military side, just the processing of that event and it was new for the the army to process and now i i discovered that they actually have a term for that um like this is an actual term that you can get a disability like if you've had it's called a uh, military sexual trauma they just call it mst i'm like oh okay so that it's an actual thing that has a diagnosis in the va which is it's new to me. I just recently got connected with the Veterans Affairs community here in California, and someone asked me if I had collected on any of my VA benefits, and I said, no. It's It just felt like such a struggle to get so much paperwork, such a hassle. I'm like, it's fine. Like, right, I had a regular job. I didn't need the VA benefits. I was like, it's it's fine. Like I'll be I'll be good. I have I have corporate money, and when I'll have entrepreneur money, like it's good. But the people that I'm connected with here with um, in California, they're like, no, a vet is a vet, right? You should go and see what kind of benefits that you're entitled to. So it's just been a blessing to have moved here to California and network. You know, ever since COVID started, um, we started everything started opening up after COVID getting connected, going to networking events and just meeting new people and just, just connecting. I, I'm an extrovert. I, <laughs> I love connecting with people and COVID was a little bit hard. COVID was a little bit hard on my business as well. Cause I'm, we just moved from Hawaii to California in 2019, like right before everything started. So I was starting to start a new, a new business or just re, you know, restart a business here in California. And it's like, 
like most of my business grew through in-person networking and going to events and just meeting people in person because that's how I am. Like I'm a feeler. I like, I like to feel people out and having transition from in-person networking to just randomly meeting people on social media. That was such a trip. <laughs> it was kind of crazy for me. Yeah. So. I, I, t- I get, I totally get that. I'm glad you took care, took advantage of the, you're looking at the benefit because you know, for those that are listening, my husband, he never served in the service, but he was a civilian working for the Department of VA. And he was, you know, he had some director um, when he left, he retired as a director. And he was very passionate about making sure our vets got their benefits. You know, my father, who did Vietnam, he had the agent or benefit, he had never applied for it. So he helped my dad apply for it. So, so anybody that's listening, if you think it's like, just like Kylie said, oh, well, I'm okay. Or, you know, take advantage of it because bless you, you served our country. You, you know, you've done so many things for us and why not? You deserve to be taken care of. And I'm glad that you did that. And you're right. Like COVID, like, let's talk about that for a second. So, cause you helped with the burnout, right? So COVID like really brought, I feel like brought like a like a halt to what all the crazy life that we led right that really burnout was so predominant in the world right and then all of a sudden we had to go stop you have to sit in a house you have to not go anywhere and you have to be with the person you're living with or be by yourself or if you're raising children you have to learn to become a teacher while you're trying to work your job right i mean you know, bless our teachers, but they couldn't do it on their own through virtual. And they were all new to that world, right? So I, I can just imagine it was a whole different form of burnout that you probably saw as well, right? For sure. And a lot of the teams that were used to, to connecting in person, right? Can you imagine going from like, hey, let me just see my coworker in the office next door to now having to learn how to communicate via um you know, Slack or Microsoft Teams and everything's typed out and like Zoom meetings, they meeting virtually. I think that was the biggest issue for burnout. Like the, um, I call it the churn and burn <laughs> where you're sit, you, you send the message. Like you say, you can't go next door to your, your coworker's cubicle or office. You have to wait for them to respond and like, who knows if they're actually online? <laughs> like we're all working remotely, right? <laughs> Like, when are they going to get back to you? And I feel like a lot of projects slowed down and slumped and not to mention the economic aspect of, you know, like all the shutdowns and everything, the layoffs that happened during COVID and um, just the revenue loss because of loss of foot traffic or just, just the loss of revenue in general. And then that affected the workers and like not being able to get things is here in California. I know Florida was a little bit different story, but here in California, especially I live in LA County. Like everything was closed for so long. Like how do we get groceries? Like there's all the, you know, panic buying and just, you could feel the tension and just bringing that tension into the home and us being mother. I would say when I was in corporate, I liked going to work. I'll just be honest. I kind of like going to work because I didn't have to worry about anything except for work, right? You drop your kids off at school. The school's gone for eight hours. You're at work and you're like, do, 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 do. Like you, you get to work solo by yourself, like be an adult in the adult world. And then, okay, you can transition from work mode into home mode. But when we're all living together and then, then you have spouses or maybe even like in-laws that had to move in because you had to take care of them like all like so many different things just compounded the relationships and what i saw and i think a lot of people saw there was a lot of divorces that happened during covid because like you said they're they're not used to to being with their spouse 24 7 right um i was recently talking to someone that i used to work with who retired and like it's been you know it's been a struggle to get used to to like he being home and the wife being used to to him being home (laughs) like how do you navigate that new relationship that you have or it's not new but that new um dynamic of the relationship you know what i mean like how, how do you navigate that and so there's a lot of that that was happening during covid and so you're talking about not just work stress and like 
even like that lack of separation between home and work and like having your kids pop up naked or maybe you know like <laughs> in the shirtless with a diaper on <laughs> like someone on the news right they're broadcasting news from home and it's like there are a lot of that happening like on the news broadcasts, especially on zoom meetings and people working side by side with their families in the home and when um i was working remotely on some teams like some teams would um they would have the, they would have younger kids and i'd say like they went off camera to breastfeed you know so <laughs> just like, things like that were happening because the blur between work and home life was just like you know like the, the veil was torn like the curtain was down and right was to yeah you bring up a good it's a, that's such a reminder it's like i remember seeing some of the stuff on the news and things like that you were saying and um and i remember that i had a client that i was working with through COVID, and she's like you know the problem was they're trying to figure out their schedules because they both did this yeah. almost the same kind of work but they needed and almost the same kind of hours but they also had a child that they had to you know to help get through school that and the child was a kindergartner so it was like the first year of everything right and so so we, what we worked on with that was like, and, and so they felt like they had this tension between the two of them going, I have to work, you have to work, who's going to, you know, so they were able, we, we worked on talking to their jobs and being like, listen, what if we, you know, I move this, my schedule a little bit this way, you move your schedule this way, because no matter what, as long as you're getting the work done, that was the most important thing. It's like getting good quality work done. So they were able to incorporate that. So that helped a lot with that tension. Cause like you said, there was, so, I know so many people who divorced, like you said, throughout the process or, or really got overwhelmed slash burnout from like, I've got to do my job. I got to run you know, the whole, how am I going to get groceries? Like you said, and I, I, I call us here in Florida, we're the wicked stepchild state of the U S cause we did everything differently than the rest of the world. And we get this bad, 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 bad little pointy fingers at us. But I'm, you know, I'm glad we had some flexibility because I don't know that I, you know, I work out of my home with my husband was working at home too. And, you know, our boys are, were older in age, but still it's like that whole, that whole dynamic. I'm just glad we had that flexibility. So, yeah. So, so tell us like we've come through COVID now you're working, tell, tell us, describe like a day of working with a client who like, what's an ideal client that comes to you and says, I need help. Cause I'm like overwhelmed on getting burnt out. Yeah. So you, what I usually start off with is the schedule management is, so I have an acronym for time because a lot of the people that come that are dealing with burnout, the number one thing that they say is, oh my gosh, I just don't have enough time. But when I was journaling, I got a download. Time is actually an acronym for the four, like four top resources. It's, T-I-M-E, time, obviously, ideas, especially as entrepreneurs, we get a lot of ideas. Even if you're working in corporate, right? You, you're on teams, you have projects, like there's a lot of ideas that are running around and you have to capture all of those ideas, manage them before you execute on them, right? And then for M, it's money. And then E is energy. It's, it's double, I couldn't decide on once, but it's the energy to execute. Is if you don't have the energy to execute on any of these ideas, then you're you're kind of just like spinning and like burning out because you don't have the energy to execute on those ideas. So, um, it's always like that that time thing. So we start off with the time. What does your schedule look like? What can you dump? And um, this morning I was talking to somebody else about pruning. Right, pruning is a hard process. When like you're pruning a tree, like you cut off a tree branch, you're actually cutting off a branch in this season, but it's not going to yield fruit until the next season. So that's why the pruning process is hard. You really have to decide which branches you're going to cut and kind of let go so that the other parts of your life can grow. And then the ideas piece is we try to manage the ideas that are coming in, especially for my entrepreneurs and actually have an archetype quiz, we'll probably talk about it later, but each of these four quadrants correspond to uh, a particular burnout archetype. So the ideas person, she's a popular archetype. She's like that social butterfly that 
I am obviously I am one of those. I'm a total extrovert. I love processing with other people. So a lot of times she has a hard time containing the ideas that she has and she needs to process them. She doesn't know how to hold them, where to hold them so that she has a mental kind of burnout. And the, the money piece, so that archetype would be the uh, powerhouse archetype. And so she's really driven by money and success and like how how burnout manifests in that in the in the powerhouse particularly is it's not a bad thing but she's super ambitious right she's always going for the next and the next and the next but sometimes when um she actually has a high capacity for for carrying the load right she's a powerhouse she has like this inner burst of energy but there are times where she's always chasing and she's never settling like she doesn't she doesn't know how to rest, if that makes sense. <laughs> or like rest, like rest is like a four little word for the powerhouse because she wants to keep going. She's like, if I'm resting, I'm not moving. So I need to keep moving or I'm going to lose my momentum. And I kind of fluctuate between the popular and the powerhouse archetype. Obviously, I'm trying to, you know, what I was trying to build my career in oil and gas, especially being a female in oil and gas, uh, I think it's like a one to two percent of females in oil and gas to like that one to two percent female to male ratio. <laughs> There's hardly any females, and a lot of the females that you see are engineers. I'm not an engineer. I was actually out in the field in the manufacturing plants. So that's there's a way smaller percentage of females out there, and then I had to deal with the you know, like the discrimination, like uh, girls don't belong out here, you know, having to deal with stuff like that. So I was really driven by success because I thought that would earn me the respect in my field, you know. Um, what actually ended up earning the respect of my peers was this execution piece. When I started managing projects, because that's just the way that I think. My mom used to call me her little list maker when I was little, which I didn't know she called me that until like I was doing the project management and things. And I was like, oh, let me make a list. So I grabbed my pen. And I started making a list. She's like, oh, you're still my little list maker. And I'm like, have I been doing this my whole life? <laughs> but that's what made me a great project manager because I would sit down and look at the overall scope of the project and be like, okay, well, okay. And listen to the different people going around the room. I'm like, okay, uh-huh, 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 uh-huh. And like put it all in a list and put it in a chronological timeline. That's just how I think. I'm like, okay, this first, first, first. Sh -sh -sh. Okay, if this is happening, that's happening. And a lot of the projects that I used to run had parallel timelines. Right, we, you have this piece happening and then this piece is starting, but this guy's still happening. And so we're just managing different pieces of the projects so that everything would end on this certain date. But they all had to end by this particular date. So some things had to start earlier because we we were um, reverse engineering a timeline based on this drop dead date here. So that was a lot of my life in um, the oil and gas world. and. I really thrived in those positions and that's how I was able to earn the respect because I was able to execute on the projects and you know like just I have the gift of administration so just like you know girl typing people are like wow you can type that fast I'm like I don't know like <laughs> I remember typing I remember doing typing you back in the day you, you said when you interviewed you had to take the test right remember that you took the test and all, and all that stuff so. So I love what you said, you know, and I think what's powerful and for those that are listening is that you didn't let those things like the Me Too movement and those and the, those people who I'm sure were going, oh, you're just a female or whatever. You didn't let that hold you back and you didn't allow that to like stop you from doing what you wanted to do and 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 then creating this business and, and taking that knowledge you learned and carrying it forward and creating a business and and taking you know, and then time, I love how you break down that time. It's so, and then I'm number two, I'm the I as well. I'm totally I, <laughs> that's me. 
I have, you know, I'm like, oh, I got it. I just want to go squirrel over here, you know, (laughs) so, but I totally get that. And so I want to ask you this before, as we move into like the burnout and everything, like what from your childhood, like you said, the list thing. So I think that's powerful to understand for our listeners is that, you know, that zero to eight years old is so powerful because that's when we kind of ingrain like who we are, what we become, the people pleaser, all those things. And, you know, I'm a mental fitness coach. So we talk about the things that sabotage, you know, the the judge that comes up and sabotages our brain, you know, and a lot of times from when we were younger, those things will show up in there. Um, even in our subconscious, you know, it's back there. We want to do something, but our subconscious goes, oh, well, you go sit in the corner, you know, and what a great thing you learned early on about making a list. You know, that's a really cool thing. And, and I love that. And I love to what you said with the time with the T is like with that branch, like how I took off the branch. So what I want to know is like, you've created this, but let's go, let's jump back for a second. So when you were, you know, in that, like, like what was pivotal for you that said, I want to become this entrepreneur. I, there's things that I've learned from my childhood and, you know, God bless you. What I'm going to go into the service because this is going to help me get to where I want to be in life, right? In 19 years, that's a long time, really, for a female to be in the service, let alone anybody, right? And so, what was pivotal in your life that said, "I want to learn from what I've done to create something to help people from burning out"? So, where did that come from? Ah, uh, so. So the entrepreneurial spirit, I was kind of born into it. My grandma was a serial entrepreneur. My mom worked in my grandma's business for a while. So it's weird. The entrepreneurial thing skipped a generation because my mom saw all the hardships that entrepreneurs go through. So she is kind of like your husband where she's, she was a civilian working as the DOD (laughs) position (laughs) because entrepreneurship is hard. It is like we're faced with our demons every time, like every, every, like to say new level, a new devil, right? We're just faced with new challenges, hitting our upper limits. And like, okay, how am I going to break through this level so I can cheat? I can achieve my next level. And so that was what I was like growing up as a kid. And my, my parents are divorced. My parents divorced when I was two. So I have rejection and abandonment issues. So, and then I grew up with all brothers. So like working in a, in a man's world actually fueled my passion to achieve. I'm like, oh, wait, what? A boy told me I couldn't do it. Oh, I'm going to do it. And I'm going to do it twice as better as you or whatever. <laughs> twice as good as you. <laughs> um, but honestly, there was a lot that I had to push through in this entrepreneurship journey. Because, um, you know, leaving, you know, six-figure salary position, going into entrepreneurship, and like, yeah, I got this. And then like, no, I don't got this. And just dealing with the ups and downs of that journey and even coming here, losing my clientele in Hawaii, moving to California, having to rebuild the business. It's like, oh, my goodness. <sighs> you know, um, and actually what happened was I became a health coach because of my burnout issues. I had adrenal burnout issues, right? Medically diagnosed. And my doctor was like, if you go back, I healed myself or he helped me heal, right? And he's like, you're good now. But if you go back to work, if you go back to that lifestyle, you're going to be here. I don't know if you're going to be worse, like same or worse in a year, if you go back to that. I was working 60, 70, sometimes 100 hours a week. Not even, like that was just normal. That was just normal life for me. And I really had to stop and consider my health and my children, because my children pretty much grew up without, I wanna say without me. I was working a rotating shift schedule, so I would see them off and on, but I worked nights, I worked weekends. Uh, when I worked in the days, I would leave the house at 4 a.m. I wouldn't get back till 6. So my parents were a lot involved. I had I had people helping me to mother my children. So the thing I didn't say is I'm on my third marriage right now. 
first marriage was a military marriage. It didn't really work out. We were together for like a year and change. Then my second marriage, I dealt with narcissistic abuse. Um, my kids dealt with physical abuse. So like, <sighs> then when you're talking about that zero to eight year period, having that rejection and abandonment made me susceptible to falling into a narcissistic relationship, right? With the love bombing and then you have the gaslighting and because of the rejection and abandonment, you're used to, to kind of like a, a subconscious gaslighting, if, if you know what I mean, you know, and it felt normal. And my parents are great, you know, each on their own, they divorced early, thank God, you know, um, and I had just two separate families. My mom had a family, my dad had a family, and I just went back and forth a lot, but they, they were stable. Like their relationships were stable. So I didn't suffer any abuse in my own home, but it's just that part of me that longed to be normal. Cause in growing up in the seventies, eighties, divorce was not as common as it is today, especially I grew up in a Christian environment. So if there was one other girl who's still my best friend today because we both came from divorced homes and just growing up with all the the shame and the guilt like you're different like the whole if you look at the narrative it's like i was different in, in preschool different growing up in in the christian church and the christian school and then i joined the military it's like oh different um, with the Me Too incident, I was kind of ostracized too when I was going through that because I actually spoke up and I, I I made a case about it. So I was, we processed it through JAG and it was like an actual court case and investigation and all of that. And so I was ostracized there. So a lot of um, the messages that I received were like, you're not good enough. And then bring that into entrepreneurship I'm like why not you're, you're not good enough so you need to try harder try harder try harder prove yourself prove yourself and that really was what led me to burnout and when i was creating this burnout recovery formula originally i created as a health coach just to help people to deal with the physical symptoms of burnout and then I ended up going into the business side of things because a lot of my health coaching colleagues, they saw what I was doing with my business, like with the business development stuff. And I, I love technology. I love apps. I, I love figuring things out and tinkering with things with technology pieces, built my own website. You know, my scheduling was on point, like all of that was automatic. And I, I had set everything up because like, I don't like doing anything manually. That's one thing I preach to all my clients. I'm like, what are, wait, wait, why are we doing this manually again? Like we could set up some kind of automation or system, some kind of procedure, SOP, like let's get you standardized so that you're not holding on to like, what do I have to do today? What do I have to do today? A lot of the things that we do, not even in entrepreneurship, in like our everyday, it's repetitive. And that I learned on the job through oil and gas because we had daily routines weekly routines monthly routines quarterly routines because reports had to get filed right um safety stuff environmental stuff uh, so we there's things that happen in a cadence every day every month every week and that's the world that i grew up in so when i came into entrepreneurship i'm like what? wait but we do this every week. Like, why are we starting from scratch every week? I love that. I love how you put that too, because I'm sitting here laughing quietly while you're talking because I'm going, oh yeah, I got it. Yep. Systems. Uh-huh. And you know, the, the other part too, because we do, we burn out. And I think as an entrepreneur too, we think we have to hold, like, we have to hold it all here. We have to do it all. Right. And, and right. it took me a little while to learn it. Let go. Like earlier, earlier, a little while ago, I said, I'm going to have my assistant call you about X, Y, Z. And that's because I, I had to learn it. My time is valuable. So setting somebody up for an appointment, it's not worth my $300 an hour for me to do it. If there has to be a phone call, I can have somebody to take care of it for me. And, and I think, you know, it takes sometimes, it takes a long time to learn that, you know, it, you sound just like a, an amazing coach to help go, okay, what are the things you need to do? And what are the things you can cut the branch off 
and let somebody else do it. Right. And I think that's, that's so powerful. And, you know, like you said, I kind of want to go also back a little bit, like some of the things you've gone through, like you've taken those lessons and said, you know, they can define me or I can learn from them and not let them define me. And, you know, and, and it's important that like everyone who's listening, like if you're in a, in a situation where the, you know, narcissist, whatever those situations are to, to get that help, because you deserve, we deserve to be treated how we're supposed to be, right? Because I truly believe that when we come into this world and we talk about this in my Shiro League. So I have this community of women that we meet every Sunday evening from eight to 9 p.m. And some of them are entrepreneurs, some of them are CEO moms. And if you don't know what a CEO mom, those are listing, that's my mom who back in the day was called a work from home mom. And I said, you're not sitting home eating bonbons all day. You're running a business, which is your house. So you're a CEO mom. So whether you're any of those professional women, you have children or don't have children, you, you try to balance your life, you know, and it's really important to have that help. And we talk about that in, in our in our Shiro League every Sunday. We things about, like, I always start off with what brought you joy this week? Because there could be so many things in our world that's like, just knocked me down, but what brought you joy this week? What's something that's happy, right? And we start out dancing. We all, it's a great way to end the week and, and start your week because we start out with dancing. So, you know, when you get up in your dance, it just makes you feel happy, right? And it just brings it out. And and so we have to have that joy. And and like you said, you know, your parents divorced and, you know, bless them. They gave you great relationships with them. And, you know, it is, it is divorce is hard and balancing all of that stuff. And, you know, and then we do, we take those things as we were a kid, as we've been talking about, we bring those into our world and we create those narratives in our head that say we're not worthy, I can't get it done, nobody's gonna wanna work with you. You know, we create those narratives in, in our head and and we forget that back in that file cabinet, so if you're not if you're not watching, you can put your hand in the back of your head, you have this file cabinet back there and that's your subconscious and it's saying, you've got this, but you gotta tell the front cabinet to move out of the way and open up and empty out those files that need to go away, right? And so I love that you do that with your clients. I love that you help them understand this is the branch you need to take off and hand it over to Mary Jane or Susie Jones, whatever that is. And, you know, and, and work through that because you're right. Our mental fitness is so powerful and we have to allow the release of the judge and those things that sabotage us to move forward. And as a, as you're working with them with this burnout coach, I, it sounds like to me, as you work with them, they start getting those aha moments, right? And they start going, oh, I can make time now to go work out because I've released this. Or I can make time to go to on a staycation and take care of my self care because I've got this time under control, right? And um, so tell me, like, tell us a, a great success story with one of your clients that was like, oh my gosh, I'm so glad that this happened for me. Yeah. So uh, one of my clients, when she, you know, when she hired me, there's a lot of things like happening in her business and she was already. Um, I think she was like almost to a six figure coach. And you know, when you're at that threshold, you're like, right, new level, new devil. And you have to, you know, acquire different systems and different processes because you need to get to a new level. So a lot of the time she was like, oh, I need to, I'm like, do you need to do it? Do you need to do it? She's like, oh yeah. Okay. So like, a lot of it at, at that point, she had a virtual assistant, she had a copywriter. And then we, we, I was like, um, you need a client success specialist. You got to hire that person. So we hired a client success person. And, um, because I love the tech and whatever, and I love Zapier. If you're not familiar with Zapier, it's an app that connects all your other apps. So we were able to build her out a, like a multi-step zap. From when someone bought, they would get the, all the onboarding stuff, documents, uh, contract signs, and all of that, and it would happen in a split second. And that was something that she had outsourced. She was doing a lot of it herself, but then she ended up outsourcing that. And then we went a step further, and we just automated all of it. And so she recently had a launch that I think um, when I last checked in with her was almost at a 200K launch because of the automated processes. There's no way that um, 
she could have done all of that. Like, how can you sign like hundreds of contracts? <laughs> like, you, how do you do that? <laughs> Unless it's all done automatically and yeah, so I said that would be my biggest current success. Story. That's that's awesome. And then watch your smile just light up when you think about that. And I mean, and just think about it, if those that are listening and watching, it's like when you can put things like those in place, that, that stress goes away. Because like you said, having everything automated and getting it going, because then what happens is when you could put those those things in place, not only just for your self-care, but also for your, you know, you have more time to work on the next thing you want to work on, right? It's like, yeah, it's a whole mental thing. I just love that. So this has been fun. I've been enjoying this. And um, I want to ask you a question, though. So we t I talk about self-care a lot. So tell us, what what do you do for your self-care? Honestly, my self-care is Hallmark Christmas movies. Wait, do you watch them year round? Yes. I love it. You're, I'm a big Christmas person and people think I'm crazy. That's not Christmas. Like who says it has to be Christmas? It brings me joy, right? It's like, it does. It's so loving and so fun. And everybody just is like, why is it just this time of the year? We're all wonderful and nice to each other, right? It's like, it's so cool. I love that you do that. That's so awesome. Yeah. Now tell us again, like how old are your kids? Cause I know you mentioned your kids. So tell us how old your kids are. Oh, yes. So my kids are older. Um, my oldest is 25. He's going to be 25 actually in a couple of weeks. And then my daughter, who's my youngest, she's 21. So I'm an empty nester at age 44. I started young. <laughs> so awesome. now I, you know, it's, I used to think that I was like, I used to berate myself like, oh, I was technically a teen mom because I hadn't met 19. You know what I mean? And I was like, oh, I didn't get to go to college. I had to like really, you know, I was kind of stuck in the mud at the beginning of my life and my career. But now like I'm still in my 40s. Yes. Like, I'm starting this new adventure. I'm an empty nester. And my husband and I are like, ooh, like. I travel a lot now. Like I've been back and forth to Hawaii about three, four times this year because that's where I'm originally from. Just going back and forth to home. We went to Las Vegas because um, we've had friends and family. We would drive to Las Vegas. Like uh, I think we've been traveling at least once a month. That's awesome. And, yeah, and it allows this entrepreneurship life allows me to do that and having a schedule. You know, where you time block like what days are which and Girl, if you looked at my Google Calendar, everything's color coded. It looks kind of crazy, but I block everything out. I block time for self care. I block time for the gym. I have my gym schedule set up Monday, Tuesday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. I have a 10 a.m. class. Tuesday, Thursdays, I have a um, morning. So I actually skip. I skip the gym to come here because okay. you're important to me. <laughs> you're important to me. Yeah. But. You know what I'm saying? I have them scheduled on my calendar because if it's not scheduled, I live and die by my Google calendar. If it's not there, I'm like, well, then I have this white space. And what do you do with white space? You end up filling it in. It's like having junk food in your house. You just end up eating mindlessly. You end up spending your time mindlessly if it's not, if it's not like you're, you're not telling your body to do something. So I love that you said that because the Google calendar, I was at an event on Friday and we talked about that, like to time managers, like put it on your calendar, make sure it's on your calendar. I, I put on my calendar a 15 minute five, or five minute break to breathe. I do that in the middle of my day. So, you know, and it's so true. Like you have to put that stuff on your calendar and you have to block in time for yourself because otherwise everybody takes your time. And, and here's the thing I've learned. And, and I know, you know, a little bit about my story is, those that are listening should also know by now that we did lose our son. He was 25 in July. And the one thing, and our youngest one, Nate, is 23 in January. So I'm right there with you. And so um, what I learned from like my life and going back when I look at my life is, you know, relationships are important, number one. Time for, and my biggest relationship is with myself. You know, I've got to take care of myself and then my family and then, you know, my career, my entrepreneurship. But one of the things that I, I always am so about is like filling your cup, because if your cup is not filled, 
you can't do these great things. You can't teach people how to time block. You can't teach people how to, you know, once a month you can go travel. You can if you do it the right way. It takes a little time to get there, but you can. And and the thing is, is like, if your cup is full, great, because then you're taking care of you. Whatever comes after is where everybody else comes into play. And we talk about that in, that, in our Shira League too, in our community of women is that we have to pour into our cup. And, you know, I love that you share that. I love that you color code because we need to have a system. And it sounds crazy, but systems are really good for you. And I know, you know, I fought that for the longest time, but I love systems. But the other thing too, is we were talking about COVID earlier. Is I feel like we're, we're on this cusp of, hitting that craziness again. And I I hope those that are listening and watching understand that don't go back there. Whatever right now, like I heard somebody this morning walking, I was leaving to go, my gym's in my neighborhood. I was walking up to go to my gym and I heard somebody walking her dog and she must have been on her phone because I heard her tell somebody, you have your whole life ahead of you. Well, I'm here to tell you, God, God knows when your whole life is here or not. And so, you may have just the next five minutes. So if there's something that somebody wants to do, like you said, is do it. Like block the time on there and do it. And and if it's a dream, if you're if you are a CEO mom and you want to do something, uh, you know, you have this hobby or you want to be start a business, you know, talk to somebody and find a mentor for all those things. Because even as a professional woman who's either raising family or not raising family you know, it's okay to get help because I love what you did. Like you grabbed your community around you and said, I'm raising these kids. I'm, I'm in the middle of these different situations in my life. I need to make sure I've got some good center help for my kids. And we all need that for, we need to do that for ourselves. We often do that for others and you have to do that. And so I'm so excited that you are doing this for everybody and you're teaching this and you're showing them the steps to do that because I think it's really powerful and I would love, Kylie, for you to tell everybody how they find you. I know you have something on your on your uh, site about where they could take a test, right? Yes. So it's burnoutarchetypequiz.com. It'll tell you which one of the four archetypes that you are. And it's the, um, I'm sorry, the powerhouse, right? The popular, the philanthropist and the perfectionist so those are the four major archetypes and you can go ahead and take the quiz and it'll give you um like a bunch four words and just pick which one of the four words that currently resonate with you that's and i know my perfectionists are going to want to kind of overanalyze what hits you in your gut just go with that gut feeling I know, I know you popular archetypes are, you know, you're all about the feel and like what feels good. So you guys are probably blaster it super quickly, um, but just pick which word fits you, resonates with you, and then it'll spit out an answer. And you'll also get a little um, descriptor of like how you can use your archetype for, to your advantage. So for the popular archetype, that's why Pearl, you probably have a podcast and you have a YouTube channel and a radio show because this is where you thrive. And this is how you want, you are building your business is meeting with other people. But for the perfectionist, probably your, um, your marketing type would be more writing or blogging because it's something that you can write and you can go back and edit and, you know, make sure it looks good before you put it up on the website and you can do all those checks and balances that feel good to you. So that that's what I love about the different archetypes. There's different ways to build your business without burning out once you understand how you work. Because a lot of times we're burning out here because we're following this coach and that coach. And we're like, oh, if she's doing that, I'm going to do that. And uh that we like you go scroll oh that one's got that's a good idea I, yeah i had to stop myself from doing that one time as well too i just it's yeah. so, so important to understand that so for everybody who's listening if you if you got a pen and paper it's called burnout b-u-r-n-o-u-t archetype so it's a-r-c-h-e-t-y-p-e quiz.com so burnout archetype quiz.com and we'll put it in all the links too when we, when we that you can find everything we're going to put this on facebook Instagram or all over the place and um and YouTube and everything will make sure everybody has it. So I just love that that you're doing that and I just think it's so powerful. So it'd be interesting to see 
everybody post to what their archetype is because I would love to hear that as well. I think that'd be really cool. So this has been so much fun. And like I said, we'll put all the links to, to reach out to Kylie as well. And and um, I just want to remember that we also do our cards. So Kylie already knows we're going to do our cards, our Better Question, Better Life cards. And I have to tell you that I get nothing for these cards. I didn't create them. I get no kickback, no nothing. I went to a retreat about two weeks ago and my friend bought, had bought these cards and she had them at the retreat. And everybody was like, oh, I like this question. Oh, I don't like that question. So it was it was really fun to watch. And and my friend was like, well, I'll just pass a card out to everybody. I go, no, 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 no. They got to pick their card. It's all about the card you pick. So it's really powerful. So I'm going to shuffle them. And Kyle, you're going to tell me when to stop. Okay. So here we go. Wait, you're um, you're not on. Uh, you got to unmute yourself. I can't hear you. <laughs> Okay. okay. Let's do it again. Again. Ready? Here we go. Tell me when yeah. to stop. Stop. Okay. Almost to the other end. I'm proud of you. Ooh. How do you care for yourself? Oh, gosh. What's popping up for me right now is therapy. You've heard part of my life story, and I was holding a lot of it in. Um, I mean, I've believed in therapy for a long time, but I finally invested in EMDR therapy, which if you're not familiar, it's more um, like trauma processing type of therapy. And I, I've been to talk therapy a lot and it's like a lot of it's just like rehashing and like just talking about the problem. So the EMDR therapy actually... Um, if you're into the mental fitness thing, right, it actually helps you rewire your brain and process the trauma so that you're not holding on to it. Because a lot of times we can't go to talk therapy, but it's kind of gets stuck in our brain. So the EMDR helps to uh, rewire how we processed our trauma and it helps to desensitize us from that. So yes, the trauma has happened to us if you're listening and this has happened to you too, but we don't have to hold on to like the negative emotions that are attached to it. And sometimes we talk about it, we talk about it, 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 it can kind of sit within us. What I liked about the EMDR once I found out about it is you're, you're rewiring your brain to release that trauma. So the events are there, but they're not triggering anymore. It's the best decision I've ever did. That's awesome. And I love that you said that too, because it really is, like I said earlier, if you need help, get help, you know, therapy, whatever therapy works for you, it's really, really important to have that. For many years, I didn't go because I was, I didn't know, you know, and so I myself go. And I, in fact, you know, I've gone a lot since my son's accident, you know, and, and it's, it's just, it just helps to process it as well as do a lot of journaling. I do a lot of meditation, like all those things. So whatever works for you is really, really powerful. So I'm glad you shared that. This has been so much fun. I loved having you on here and I can't wait to see all the great things you're doing. It's so cool. And so I just want to remind everybody, we talked at the beginning of the show about our pajama retreat. So here's the deal. If you go to WSLivingRetreats.com, that's WSLivingRetreats.com, our Black November special, forget just one day, the entire month of November, you're getting this year's retreat price for next year's, I'm sorry, next year's retreat for this year's price. But here's the deal. If you sign up by the end of November, you are not only getting a retreat, which is Thursday through Monday morning in your PJs, no makeup at the beach, but you're also getting included as a bonus is you're going to be included in our positive intelligent course, which is a six week course about creating a better mindset. You're also going to be included in our Sheer League. You've heard me talk about that today, our community of women. Every Sunday evening from 8 to 9 p.m. Eastern time, we get together and we uh, just hang out. We, Like I said earlier, we talk about what's brought us joy. We work on different things. We have guest speakers come in for Chinese Habits and all kinds of great things that happen. So that's going to be a bonus as well. But the additional bonus you're, you're going to get is you actually will also be included in our Vision Purse event. So we create really cool Vision Purses. So they're not too, too big, but instead of a board, it's a purse and you can carry it with you or just something different to keep at home with yourself. So that's all included. So for $17.97, dollars 
you get to come to a five day retreat, have a great time, but you get all those other great bonuses. So if you want this year's price for next year's retreat, you have to go to WSLivingRetreats.com and grab your spot today. So I'm so glad we spent time with Kylie today. And I want to remind everybody that as we come into this world, we are this amazing oyster on the outside. But inside, as you really work on your inside and you really start working your subconscious and that mental fitness, you find that beautiful pearl inside. So I hope all of you go find your beautiful pearl to greatness and have an amazing rest of your day. Thanks for joining us. Hello, sunshine. Good to see you again.